Muslims are told that Muhammad visited Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, but that is impossible because Al-Aqsa Mosque didn't even exist during Muhammad's lifetime. We'll tell you which mosque he really visited. Hello everyone, this is Al Fadi and I want to welcome you back to another one of those short and succinct videos that we are doing with our dear brother Rob Christian. And if you've really been exposed to the previous one we've done, uh, you'll uh, notice that those are very straightforward shows with specific points because we want to make sure they're short, straight to the point, helpful to you as a resource. And if you're a Muslim person, we want to welcome you. And we hope that you can interact with us and respond back to these specific evidence that we are sharing with you. Today, for instance, we want to talk about the real, basically, Aqsa Mosque. And the question is this, did Muhammad really visit the Aqsa Mosque? Why are we bringing it up? Because chapter 17 of the Quran is dedicated to this alleged journey that Muhammad was taken, and whether in body or in spirit, first from Mecca to what we call today Al-Quds, uh, or Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, that's to the specific location, and then he ascended from there to heaven, Al-Isra wal Mi'raj. But, Rob, um, is that really what happened? I mean, there was no such thing as Al-Aqsa Mosque when Muhammad actually alleged this whole thing, because he died in 632. Historically speaking, Al-Aqsa Mosque, or at least the compound itself, was being built in 691, and the Dome of the Rock itself was finished by uh, the son of that caliph, uh, basically Abdul Malik, his son, is the one that finished it after his death, the death of Abdul Malik in 705. Exactly, and this is a very important topic because Muslims love to tell us that Muhammad jumped on the back of Al-Buraq, you know, and he went from uh, Mecca, supposedly, from Masjid al-Haram to the farthest mosque, Al-Aqsa Mosque. And he did that on the back of Al-Buraq, as you see, as you already mentioned, brother, uh, a hybrid kind of creature uh, that looks like a human, but with uh, the, the body, the shape of uh, a mule or a donkey. So uh, the story goes like this, uh, and we find this, as you mentioned, in chapter 17, ayah 1, right? Ayah 1, that uh, Allah uh, commanded uh, this being uh, to allow Muhammad to jump on his back and go from the Masjid al-Haram, uh, al Masjid al-Haram in Mecca, supposedly, to the farthest mosque, Al-Aqsa Mosque, Al-Aqsa, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. So let's see, let's see if the Muslims, as they always told us, that this happened from Mecca, supposedly, right, from Mecca to Jerusalem, Jerusalem. But that's already a disaster because in the time of Muhammad, there was no mosque in Jerusalem. But to actually understand, where is the real, where is the real Al-Aqsa Mosque? Could there be a possibility that there was a mosque near Mecca that Muhammad used to go and visit and pray in, in the time of Muhammad in the 7th century? Because as you mentioned, uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem was built by Abdel Malik, Caliph Abdel Malik, and finally finished by his son after his death by his son uh, in 705. So if we can do some digging, we can find we can find in the Islamic books that actually Masjid al-Aqsa <laughs> in the time of Muhammad was very close to Mecca. And here's the proof. Here is a book called Akhbar Mecca, very famous book in the Sunni world. Volume 5 by Muhammad bin Ishaq bin Al-Abbas Al-Faqihi. In this very book, we will see where actually the original Al-Aqsa Mosque was in the 7th century in the time of Muhammad. And we will prove to you that it's certainly not in Jerusalem, but actually very close area between Mecca and Medina. And here is the proof. On page 66, brother, and we scroll down, we find a Sahih Hadith. Look, Isnadahu Sahih, Isnadahu Sahih. And the Hadith number is 2,800, 
50, right? Please confirm, brother. Yes, 2,850. And it is isnaduhu sahih, meaning, as you stated, it's a sahih, authentic narration. All right. If we go to that hadith here on top, we see the hadith number two, uh, 2,850. This is the hadith that we see on the screen. Maybe you want to read uh, the hadith, brother, for us. Sure. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to start at the beginning. It says, Haddathana Al-Zubayr ibn Abi Bakr, meaning the one who narrated to us was his name is Al-Zubayr, the son of Abi Bakr. He says, um, An Muhammad ibn Tariq, narrated from Muhammad ibn Tariq, that he said, Ittafaqtu ana wa mujahid, we agreed, myself and mujahid, bil ja'rana, that's I think an area, uh, he told me that the Aqsa Mosque, uh, which is behind this valley, it's uh, also, again, another area basically related to the location. Musalla and Nabi, meaning the place where Muhammad prayed, again, the name of that area. Uh, so right there, that's the underlined part. Do you want me to keep reading? Yeah, no, basically, uh, you already did enough damage, and here is why. Here is the translation. Again, this is the Sahih Hadith that we found in Akhbar Mecca, basically the news about Mecca, by Muhammad ibn Ishaq bin al-Abbas al-Faqi, volume 5, page 66, Hadith number 2850. And it says, from Muhammad bin Tariq, he said, Mujahid and I agreed to meet in al jarana And this is a very important point area called al jarana He then told that the Prophet was praying in Masjid al-Aqsa. Do you see it? So in the time of Muhammad, Muhammad used to go to an area called al jarana or al jarana and there was a mosque, a masjid called Al-Aqsa, which is behind the valley, Al-Adwat al-Qusra. So the name of the valley, we even know the name of the valley called Al-Adwat al-Qusra. In Al Jarana, did you catch it? So right. the Al Aqsa Mosque that the Quran is talking about in chapter seventeen, ayah one, is actually not in Jerusalem, but to a, in a very close area called Al Jarana, dear brother. And Muslims don't know about this. This is damaging. So later, Muslims wanted to attribute miracles to Muhammad that he that he never had, and they came with the fabrication, a lie, a myth that Muhammad went on the back of Burak, <laughs> traveled from Mecca all the way to Jerusalem to pray in uh, Masjid al-Aqsa. Well, Masjid al-Aqsa in Jerusalem did not even exist yet because it was later built in the year 705, but Muhammad died in the year 632. Yeah, Muslimin, this is damaging, and this is a Sahih Hadith. Brother, right. what do you want to say about this? And, and I want to say, I mean, it's quite possible that uh, uh, the caliph uh, basically uh, uh, who built it uh, uh, he built it, maybe used the same name to commemorate this account, if indeed such thing happened. But are you going to show people now on the map where Al Jarana is? Oh, yeah. If we do a simple uh, Google Maps search, as you see, a Google Maps search, if we put uh, Al Jarana, because that exists in Saudi Arabia, Al Jarana, the same Al Jarana, and we uh, take the second destination, Mecca itself. We see that Al Jarana, where the Masjid Al Aqsa was in the time of Muhammad in the seventh century, here on top, is only a 25 minute drive by car from Mecca. Mecca. So, Muhammad actually, when he used to go and visit Al Jarana to pray in that mosque called Al Aqsa, is very close to Mecca. So yeah, so Muhammad, it's, a, it's an override, basically. Yeah. You take an override, and it doesn't even cost that much to go there. So maybe, maybe it was called that because it meaning it's the other mosque, technically speaking. Exactly, because you know the closest one was in Mecca, and the farthest one that is, uh, you know, uh, let's say if we uh, Muhammad, let's say Muhammad used to travel by camel or maybe by feet. It, it's only a couple of hours, but Muhammad never ever listen carefully, my friends. Muhammad never ever went to Jerusalem. He did not see Jerusalem. Muslims much later wanted to give Muhammad a miracle which he never had. So Islam is nothing but lies built on top of lies on more lies.
Please yeah. wake up, ya Muslimin. We do not hate you, but we want to share the truth with you. What your Muslim books are saying, your Muslim books are saying that al Jurana was really close to Mecca, certainly not in Jerusalem. Amen, brother. And, and, and again, I mean, uh, I, I can see Muhammad maybe having a dream about that location. Uh, sure. I mean, we visit places sometimes and we may have a dream, maybe a nightmare, whatever the case might be about something that we're familiar with. But to take that and all of a sudden amplify it and make it sound like he was transported from Mecca all the way to Jerusalem or the Jerusalem area or the compound known uh, Baytul Maqdis, you know, uh, where you have the mosque and we have the Dome of the Rock and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, historically speaking, it's very damaging because Abdul Malik built uh, this mosque in 691. The Dome of the Rock was basically completed and finished by his son in 705. Muhammad died in 632 AD. Do the math and you tell me, folks. Uh, if you don't see a problem, uh, then uh, we, we're talking, uh, uh, you know, basically two different things here. Any last minute thing, brother, you want to close this with? No, uh, you know, the, the, the funny thing is that Muslims and then... And, and, we know what the Islamic scholars say about the nation, the, the Islamic nation. The nation of Islam are nothing but a literate nation. It's an illiterate nation. They don't do their homework. They don't study their books. It's damaging. It's embarrassing that we Christians have to do their homework for them. And when we do their homework for them and we read their books, over and over we see there, there are no miracles at all. Muhammad did not go to Jerusalem. Muhammad used to only visit a very close nearby masjid and he called it Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa because it was m way more far from Mecca than Masjid Al-Haram that is nowadays in Mecca. So no yeah. miracle, nothing. And here's the beauty about it. Even Google and Google Maps know where Al Jarana is and Masjid Al Aqsa is. So there you have it. I know. It's yeah, right brother, and you are you are from Saudi Arabia originally, so you know these places and you know how how close Al Jarana is to Mecca. So this is damaging. Absolutely. Well, brother, thank you so much as always. Thank you everyone for watching. And if you're a Muslim, watched uh, who have just watched this uh, uh, this particular uh, show, come to Jesus uh, because Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. He will take you to the real heaven that Muhammad alleged that he's been to, whom he says that uh, when he was there, uh, allegedly he looked at uh, his uh, rewards and he looked at the rewards for Abu Bakr and we told Abu Bakr about his reward. Abu Bakr says, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, amanu makrullah, uh, even if one of my feet were in paradise. I mean, th that is telling right there. The closest companion to Muhammad didn't even believe that Allah is giving him that rewards. And you're telling me you want to follow a guy that supposedly went just a 25 minute walk uh, or a drive I should say, to a location, and all of a sudden we have a whole chapter. What a waste of pages, actually, uh, to have a whole chapter with this claim that didn't even take place the way it was explained to us. Thank you, brother. Thank you, everyone, for watching. This is Al Fadi over and out. God bless. Take care. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sira International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.